Here's one of the strangest stories of aviation. This barn in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California has hidden a secret for many years. And this plane and its inventors are still shrouded in mystery. They are the Gilmore brothers. And they were refused, yes, refused a patent on their machine in April 1898, five years before the Wright brothers flew. For well, the authorities contended that heavier than air ships would never fly, and that the idea alluded to perpetual motion. The inventors' claims, somewhat substantiated, are that they were the first to design a monoplane, first to design a cabin passenger plane, first to design a screw propeller and mounted on the nose of the ship. Although this plane, for the lack of a powerful enough motor, never flew, the brothers say that they built hundreds of gliders and flew them in flights of an hour or better, but always lacked the funds to buy suitable motors. Still another surprise from the Gilmores. They say that they were able to fly robot gliders like this one with electromagnetic remote control for a distance of a mile and a half and make it return to the starting point. In support of their claim, they have patent papers to exhibit. Until these pictures were made, none of the planes had been touched for more than a quarter of a century. Discouraged, they gave up their experiments and allowed time and decay to take their toll. The Gilmore brothers remain men of mystery. Did a skeptical world pass them by? Here is a kamikaze plunging to certain destruction. How did they get that way? How were kamikaze pilots and their equally fanatical brothers of the infantry mass produced by the enemy? Not long ago, the man you saw die looked something like this. Or this, an innocent schoolboy. What happened? Let's look at the Japanese school system for part of the answer a system as rigidly controlled by the government as the government is controlled by the military. In Japan, every school day begins with worship at a Shinto shrine. From birth to death, there's this daily devotion. Its religion and patriotism rolled into one, with the emperor at the top, identified with God. This indoctrination continues through all their classes. Even the alphabet is taught in these terms. From the simplest exercises in spelling to the most elaborate lecture in philosophy, there's no independent thinking or any challenge to the propaganda of the Jap ruling class. In America, science exists to make life easier and richer for everyone. In Japan, science has a single direction the domination of Asia by war. When not in school, Japanese children work, many of them in the fields, planting and harvesting rice, the foundation of the empire. Food is scarce in Japan, and every acre of soil must yield its full quota. The soldiers of imperialism must be fed. Nothing from the rice plant is wasted. Tirelessly, the women and children weave sandals, hats, mats for the sons of heaven, for the willing slaves of the emperor. Health is perhaps the most important problem in Japan. The Jap diet is too starchy and rickets are common. The classrooms and homes are badly heated and the tubercular rate is high. Sickly and undernourished soldiers cannot conquer the world, so sturdy manpower must be built in the school. Calisthenics are part of the school training from kindergarten on, but athletics and games are only for physical development and obedience. None of it's for fun, as in America. And the Jap is taught only to win. 
To lose is to be disgraced. Every one of these children knows he's perfecting his body for only one purpose, for conquest and war, for the emperor. Here is the dead end of such a system. What begins in the cradle leads to an ignominious grave. I bet you all remember. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've plenty of, baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, you should find happiness and I guess all those things that you've always signed for. Gee, I'd like to see you looking swell, baby. All those things that Woolworth doesn't sell, baby. Till that lucky day, you know darn well, baby. I can't give you anything but love. You know darn well, baby. I can't give you anything but love. Hey, I'm going to be late. Gee, fellas, you'll have to excuse me. I'm awfully sorry. Why don't you do some singing, huh? I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've plenty of, baby. Dream a while, dream a while, wish you'll do fine. Happiness, and I guess. That's the only thing I've got, dear. Singing maybe lots of fun, but what can you do when the day is done? Dream a while, scheme a while, you should do fine. Things that you pine for, not what you sign for. Someone to kiss you, not government is huge. I'd like to see you looking. Shoppers attack, you really send me jack. You're the size that I've got eyes for. Every day I write your letter, pin me up, I'm wearing a sweater. I don't know what you'd get weary of, baby. But I'm sure it's anything but love. Well, I have to go now, fellas. But uh, I'll pick you up later. 
Here we are again. Hope you enjoyed that bad scramble. We're ready for you, Miss Hodges. I'll be right there. See, that's the appointment I was telling you.